Hello everybody, welcome back to a video. So glad to see you. Thanks for joining me for today's video, which is all about my 2024 planner setup. I know we're still in November, at least the time that I'm filming this right now, but I want to get a head start, um, especially for those of you who are struggling to figure out what you want for the following year. I know this is like that same time of year every year. Everybody gets excited about like the holidays and all that. I just get excited about finding a new planner and I know this is um, a real important part to making your new year go smoothly and of course it's an opportunity to try something new if that's what you are up for. Now I have filmed planner setups and planner videos for quite a few years now and initially I had done them while I was still a university student so my needs for a planner were much different than my needs now as a working professional and that was a big mindset shift and also a utility shift for me as well. When I was a student, I had, you know, my life outside of school I was planning for. I really need to keep a track of all my assignments, when things are due, when I had lectures and labs and all that stuff. So it was almost like um, a two-parter. Right now, most of my school teacher planning stays at work and I don't need to think about that. So really, my planner is just for me. Maybe a bit of blogging things, some appointments when I'm meeting up with friends. Da, 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 da. That has really changed the way I look at planners and my planning needs. So over the last few years, I had really struggled to figure out what was now the better fit for me versus what was a good fit then. So I'm super excited to show you what I figured out. I think this is the one. And the choice for 2024 is the Lordstrom 1917. Now, I'm going to avoid saying the name too often because I feel like I'm saying it wrong every single time. I did look it up, by the way, but um, languages are hard. So this one is the ever popular brand, right? I know a lot of people like Moleskine. I like this one for the color choices and I do like the paper a little better, I think. I also have tried the Moleskine, but um, I've had a Lordstrom from the past when I attempted bullet journaling, like remember that phase in life. So this is my choice for the upcoming year, but it does start in November. So I'm gonna set it up with you right now, try a few things. I'm gonna show you my planning supplies. I bought some new goodies and I'm gonna do my intro outro now, all the bits, start setting it up and then I do have other planning goodies coming in the mail. So that will take a little longer, but I'll add those clips in when we get there. Can we say that for what it's worth, we were coming from this monstrosity. And this was a time when I was really trying to figure out what is my new planning style, what new system worked for me, now that I'm no longer in school. And I had tried so many different things. This was supposed to be my plan for 2023, but I quickly abandoned it. I couldn't keep up with it. It just, it wasn't working for me, so to speak. So this is kind of a very traditional, if you will, planner. It's got your tabs, it's got your monthlies, it's got your weeklies, it's got lots of space. It's kind of ginormous, so it doesn't sit on my desk. But I think scaling down to something like this is going to be amazing for the upcoming year, and I'll show you all the tidbits. So I hope that you are excited um, to see how this works out, and pause the video anytime. If you got a question, if you got a thought, if you're like, ooh, you should do this, or I do this and I really like it, um, drop a comment down for me down below, and I will try and link all of my supplies if they're available through the great wide web. I'll keep them um, down below in the info bar as well. So if you see something I'm talking about or using that you really like, go and check it out down there. Otherwise, grab yourself some snacks and a drink and let's go into the top down view. All right, let's check things out from here. This is again the Loistrom 1917 2024 version. And this is a monthly planner. Now this is going to be the biggest difference between what I was using before and what I am going to use for the upcoming year. Of course I got some goodies as well so we'll put those on in a second but I want to talk you through the main reason why I made the switcheroo. So this was my planner for 2023 and I you know initially liked that it was like nice and large, it was like a hard cover it had all the monthly tabs, right? And I liked at the time the idea there was like a, a month at a glance. There was your monthly pages. And then you had these boxes for each week. 
and then a space to make notes because what I find often is I need to meal plan I need to write something down and it may not be an appointment per se but I like having the separation between what's going on here and what's going on here so in my head this was a great idea right and at the end of the month there was also a notes page what ended up happening was that now with work being just at work, I didn't need all of these weekly pages. And I was often feeling quite guilty about not using up all of my weekly pages and they became kind of useless. Instead, they were just there. They took up space. I didn't want to rip it out of my planner, but at the same time, I wasn't using it. And it was almost like a constant reminder of my failures of not writing something into my planner. I know it's weird probably just in my head but that that was the situation so I really didn't actually need those weekly pages because a lot of my stuff either happens on the weekends or I might have one or two things on the weekdays and I would just pop them into my monthlies because I like having that month at a glance hence we were thinking that um, maybe this would be a better choice now I have almost always used a weekly planner and most of your weekly planners will have a monthly page involved so you know i use them for planning appointments to have that month at a glance um, for future planning whatnot i never used a planner that was just monthly so this is very new for me now this one in particular comes in a variety of languages i believe here are some details in case you're curious um, it has labels for archiving. I'll show you that in a sec. It's got a back pocket as per usual. Two bookmarks. The paper is 80 GSM or right now it says G slash M squared. I hope that means the same thing. I've used other Lordstrom notebooks before. Those of you who were with me during my attempt at bullet journaling days may remember this beautiful yellow one. Um, I assume that the paper is exactly the same. It's just your standard paper. They do make a separate, um, couple of separate notebooks with slightly thicker paper, but that doesn't have all these bits in it, so never mind. This one is their monthly with a notebook at the end. So they've got a couple of different versions. I like this one because it allows me to do my monthly plans and then I could create my own pages, special pages at the back as I need to. Um, and you know, it can just kind of all be in one together. Because most of the time I do not need those weeklies. Um, I might just need to make a memo for something. Now, as you'll notice right away, I was doing some planning for this video. I put stickies on some pages and you can see how sort of thinnish these pages are. I don't know if that's going to bother me later on. We'll have to find out as we go through the year. But right now, even just with a dark sticky note on the back, you can kind of see through it. So again, 80 GSM paper. You know, this is this is our situation. And I'll talk about the pen thing too, because that actually makes a bit of a difference. So if we go straight to the back first, here is the pocket. They've made a couple of changes. The pocket now, I feel like is maybe a little sturdier than before um it's you know this whole area of the back so you can put your goodies in there i put these labels in there these came with my planner they come with all moisture notebooks i believe some info whatnot so i just tuck that in here for now it comes with a coordinating strap that is very well secured, by the way, to the back. I've never had an issue with um, it coming off or whatnot. It comes with two bookmarks, one that matches, always, and then one that is a little bit different. So if you wanna keep one on your months page and one on you know, the notes page you're currently doing or whatnot, that's great, that's how I intend on using it. One for the months, one for the back side of the notebook. So I'll tuck that in here for now. This is a soft cover. I believe you can get this as a hard cover. I order mine off of the Lordstrom website. Um, I believe it came shipped from Ontario or somewhere. Um, arrived fairly quickly within about a week um, to the West Coast. And the colors are probably limited based on whatever their chosen choice is for each year. So this is what they had um, and this is what I went with. I prefer the soft cover since the hard cover 
is, you know, it's sturdy, but it also adds weight, and I felt like that probably wasn't necessary. All right, let's get in. First up, you have your please return to info, should it go missing. This is a harder cardstock right here. This is just a cover page. You get straight into the 2023 year at a glance, January all the way to December. And then they give you both um, 2024 and 2025. Next, you go into a running, what do you even call this? Like a year calendar where it's just the months, the days of the months. Um, the Sundays are darkened, the full moons are darkened. You know, there's like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so you know, days of the week. This might be a good page if I am keeping track of any, um, say, like your menstrual cycle or if you want to do just like birthdays or particular days that mean something to you. Just want like a quick look at your year, you could do that. Um, I might kind of use my highlighters to denote certain things or if you are planning for chunks of time to be away on vacation or for business whatnot, this might be a good way to do that. I haven't quite decided how I'm going to use this page yet, but I think it will be helpful, especially if you're future planning or future logging and you can pencil a couple of things in and uh, watch out for overlapping dates. So that goes actually all the way until December of 2025. So even though this is a 2024 planner, it gives you a little extra for here, which might be good, especially when you're when it's time to migrate your planner, so you'll have these details in here. Then we get into international holidays. I'm gonna have to get a little closer here. Okay, international holidays. Um, quite a few different countries. So the months go down this way and the countries go down this way. And since we are in good old Canada, that would be right here. And it'll show you the stat holidays. Um, I believe it doesn't include the ones for BC, which is where I am, but it will include all your federal stats. So this might be helpful for you, depends. Um, it's nice to have. I think it's one of those things I actually might reference every once in a while. Now, let's go into the project plan section. So this is called project plan 2024 and it's got the months it's got the days of the calendar month and it's got a couple of rows here that you could use for things this is good if you want to do habit tracking what likely i'm going to do with it is i'm going to probably track for sewing like which days i've done some sewing i might track for a no spend day you know if i didn't spend any money that day um, maybe that's like a dot or a check mark or something and then I'll probably use this also to track the days that I have posted the video or done something for um, you know my blogging life so that's my intentions right now for this so I do like that they've got this you know you could set this up yourself but it's nice that they have it in there so again it goes into 2025 all the way to December then we get into a monthly page. Great thing about this Lordstrom one is that you start in November of the year um, and it goes into the February of the year after, so February 2025. I like this because it gives me a little bit of time to play around with my layouts and see how I want it before I go spam straight into January. You know, there's a lot of pressure with that January page, I feel like. Um, this gives me some time to like make a mess try things out and then by the time January hits, we are ready to go, we know what's going on. So some details, let's just use December as an example, some details I really like and I find that, you know, useful. You've got your previous month up here, so for example, we're in December, this is now November, this is January, you've got very clearly laid out traditional if you will um monthly with the days of the week on the top personal preference i like having my saturday sunday together because i consider that my weekends and a lot of things kind of go in between or plan or are planned together and then a monday is the start of a work week for me so i kind of go this way plus this year um, i get fridays off so it's like 
all together. So this side is the fun side for the month. On the very edge, they also give you an extra box that shows you which week of the year it is. So, you know, we've got 52 weeks in a year. This is December and now we're at 52 weeks. There is a little spot that you could write a note for the week or to sum it up or something exciting to happen or whatever you want that can go in here. I find that interesting. Not a lot of um, planners have that. And if you look closely in each of the boxes, there's actually a little spot right here that you can write a page number in because in the back when you jump to your lined notebook all of the pages are numbered which i love i think that's such a thoughtful like a simple but thoughtful detail so say something happened on i don't know december 25th christmas and then i decided to do a little spread or make a little note about something i could say reference page 34 and I can get back here to page 34 and find out whatever I need to find. So it's really convenient in that way, especially if you're like, it's just a monthly and you don't have a weekly, you can just go to a particular page should you need to. There's, there's always some space either up top or on the bottom, depending on how your month is laid out for you to make some extra notes if you want. So I thought that was really useful as well. And all the pages go like so. Then by the time you finish your monthly layout you get into here which is a what are they calling it they're t calling a table of contents i suppose there's a couple of different languages gotta have the french in there because you know canada and you've got your page number and your topic or your theme i've just started penciling this in i still gotta do some you know judging around but yeah you could reference your pages the ones that you use often for example currently i'm planning on having a month in review that's going to be page 1 to 12. i'm going to have a wish list you know 13 to 15. i have a pen test that's at the very back of the planner so this is good for those pages you know your keep and you reference very often you can just note them right here there is a blank here. I'll probably post something, put some stickers, do a thing. This is something I have set up and I want to talk to you about this situation here. I had thought it would be good to have a month, not even a month at a glance, but maybe a month in review where for each month starting November and I kind of have them penciled in Jan, right? June, July, stuff like that. I've just blocked out um, the right number of pages. I want to have something where I can kind of memory keep um, in a very simple way. So here I've got the title of the month. I am still working on my titles and um, whatnot. I'm not a I'm not a decorator per se, so it's a little trickier for me. But we're trying. Title up top, something memorable, a couple of memorable things that's happened, um, any movies, books, or podcasts I've listened to or have started. Side note, um, I just got Disney Plus as a freebie for a year, so I'm going to be watching a lot of Disney movies this upcoming year. Then I've got my wish list to do's, which is like things that I need to do but may not exactly happen every month. So it's like what I intend on doing and then I'll check off if I actually have done them. One of my goals or, um, you know, to do's, maybe a wishful to do for every month is to try a new recipe. So I like to drop down here what recipe I tried, where it's from, and if I have liked it. So I'm going to do these for all the months. I think this is a good idea, at least in my head right now. I like where this is going, so I'll have that for a couple of pages. And then I've got one page that's designated to be my wish list. You know, it's, it's good to have aspirations, <laughs> so I'm going to have a wish list. I've left myself kind of three pages for a wish list. I feel like that's plenty throughout the year. I'll jot down things I'm really interested in that I'm like pretty sure I want to get. And, um, you know, as a reward, and once I hit a whatever, I'll get myself a thing and check it off. Like it's nice to look at your little goodies list, right? So I left some pages for that. I'll set that up later. Then I've got a monthly budget and this is more of a static page. And what I mean is I'm going to list out you know, say the rents, utilities, things I know for sure every month gets taken out and maybe any subscriptions. Like I've got YouTube Premium, I pay an amount for that. I've got my Adobe, I've got whatever that I'm using. Um, and it's good just to have a static page to look at what your reoccurring um, 
expenses are and then I could always cross it out and change it as things change but this will be kind of a reference page so I've laid out and allotted two pages for monthly budget and then the rest is just gonna be whatever that happens I haven't quite decided yet so um, I like the flexibility so far of how this setup is going or my ideas for the setup and so with that being said let's talk about some of the accessories that I have purchased goody goodies time so I have from Leuchtturm themselves purchased two pen loops and initially once upon a time when I had this notebook I had gotten a pen loop but it is so small and so tight. You can really only fit a very slim ballpoint pen or a pencil. Um, and now they gave you some options, which is great. Let's talk about these options though for a second. This one um, is the Penloop XL. The Penloop XL is actually not that XL and I'll show you in a second. And then this is the regular pen loop, which is what it's always been. I will say, for what it's worth, the Loistrom pen loops are so strong. The elastic, excellent quality. The adhesive, strong as anything. I've never had to peel or come off through all those years I've um, owned the yellow notebook. But looking at my pens now, I actually think I will need the XL. So I might go back and pick up another XL. Um, I don't often use pencils, really, and even my pencils are more of those thicker mechanical pencils, um, and it just it just won't fit. Um, something like the XL, if you have a Uni, what is this? This is the Uni, Uniball 1, just about fits you really had to zhuzh it in and this is not a thick pen by any means if you have a really thin like a Bic this is a pen co but it's made by Bic one of these retro clickety clicks I've been into ballpoint pens lately they will fit into these oh I'm gonna trim this off they will fit into this or you need the pencil anything even like a Sarasa brand or even like if you use mild liners it will not fit into this like it's a really tight fit so if you like pen options you really do need to get the pen loop xl i'd be curious like i've got fountain pens and i would be doubtful well it kind of does but like you know it's it's a snug fit if you've got big fountain pens again i think people should just go for the loop xl just might be better altogether. So let's take this off and find a spot for where it's gonna go. I chose these two colors by the way. Thought it might go well with our situation here. But I think I'm gonna leave the yellow for now and I'm just going to put on the Pen Loop XL. It's just got a sticky on the back, a really strong elastic, which I love. And do we put it now previously I've actually put it on the front because I didn't want to get in the way of the pocket but now that I think about it we could probably put it in the back and be okay so I might stick it on the back now do I want Ooh. do you like your pen sitting like way up high or do you like your pens kind of sitting lower maybe maybe in the middle High, middle and if I open my pocket it shouldn't disrupt this okay maybe we're gonna do this right here There you go, and we're in. Great. This stuff is so strong. Whatever adhesive that they're using, German grade adhesive, doing the business. Okay, that's on. Now let's talk front decorations. 
I have been hoarding all my stickers, trying to figure out what I really, really want. And, you know, a lot of these are from um, Mel at Small Arts, I think. She had this whole new, like, bunny series a while back, and I oh, love the bunnies. So, those are some options there. Sorry, just bang the tripod. This has got to be my favorite sticker of all time. It's hollow. Got it off of Etsy, and it says, no bun. Like, seriously, can you even? I have this on my laptop. It's hilarious. Then I've got some of these. I think these are also from Mel. This is from another illustrator. I'll link all of them down below if you're interested. But I think I decided this is the one. I've hummed and hawed over this the past couple days actually. Because I think it'll just be super cute right here. Oh yeah, let's do it. There we go, we're on. Oh, how ridiculous. I know some people might be a little worried about the soft cover, but I actually think it'll be fine. And it really cuts down on the weight of the planner and I'll be more inclined to bring it with me to lots of different places. Okay, so now this is on. Let's talk about a couple of um, planner pens and tools that I purchased in great anticipation of using this planner. How cute is this? Super cute. So, I went to one of my new favorite stationery stores and got a couple of things. I've been seeing this online, okay? This is the Zig Clean Color Dot and I purchased the type in Mild Smoky. Now, the claim to fame for these guys is that they're a highlighter slash marker but they are round at the tip. You know those like bingo dotter things? It reminds me of those. And in theory, you just kind of dot onto your page um, if you are marking an appointment or something like that. I did try these and I think my Nordstrom paper doesn't like how wet this is. It kind of makes a funny thing at the back on the underside. So I ended up not going with this. So if I show you right here, like this way, I love the color. It's really like gentle and smoky, but it does something funny to the back. Oh, maybe I should do it like this. Like if I dot it like that, okay, the back, sometimes gets a little wet and weird. This is not too bad right now, but earlier when I was doing it, definitely not good. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be using these for my planner. I'm a little bit disappointed because I thought these were so cool and I've been seeing them loads online, but I will use them for another purpose. I think just, it doesn't bode well with the moisture and paper. So I did buy these guys and they are the mild smoky set. The concept is so cool. I like the concept being able to dot them. So then I've decided I'm actually just going to use my mod liners. I was doing some pen testing last night. Um, I think these more natural colors will do well. This one won't show up. This one is actually, this one probably would show up, but they're so similar. Um, I really like this one. This is the Mod Liner, what color are you? Olive, it came as part of a limited edition set I bought, I wanna say last year. Uh, this is something different clearly because it has a design on it. This one also works good, but I think this one is going to be the winner here. Oh. Yep, this one and probably these two. And when I did my pen test yesterday, I'll show you. See, it's already more fun with that on the back, isn't it? Um, here was our pen test situation. I, you know, I really love my Sarasas, 
but I think on the Loistrom paper they do smudge a little bit they just don't dry as quickly but the Uniball one is great and I bought some more Uniball ones just for this purpose um, I love the Sharpie but again it's just too bold and there's a lot of shadowing at the back and it will bug me I thought about using a ballpoint pen I've been getting into ballpoints lately but the issue with ballpoints is that you have to press so hard so to speak when you write that it um, embosses the back and I don't like that either so that's just kind of me being nitpicky here are some of my mild liner testers like the olive just watch is really nice the yellow is not bad and then it doesn't shadow quite as much on the back so I can live with that now speaking of my main pen I'm going to use um, I originally had bought these two on a separate occasion these are the Uniball 1 in 0.38 I really really want the chubby one um, I have it on order it's gonna take a while to get here but until then I decided this was the best quick drying smudge resistant um, choice for my Roystrom paper of course when I was at the store we got these this is limited edition um, I want to say maybe it's a collaboration with a an influencer question mark because it feels very lifestyle esque I have no idea what any of this stuff says but this was limited edition from a while ago and they still had some and this is kind of like color combos that they put together for the morning, the afternoon, and the evening. These are again Uniball 1 and it came with this color combo set which I thought you know if you can get stationery or pens especially or pens and highlighters that are pre-chosen for you in a color combo they're just easy foolproof and you don't really have to think about it but you're already stylish because they thought about it for you having swatched all of these pens my favorite is actually this this is the uniball 1f um, i don't think it says on here but it's the 1f and it's a little bit different from the other uniball ones it has this little bit up here i feel like it writes a little better for me the 0.38 is quite thin and i do like a thicker line if i can get a hold get a hold of the uniball one 0.5 i think is the thicker choice i would love that but for now it's fine and i would really love some more of this 1f it writes super nicely so and again i need to be quick drying in my loistrum i can't have smudgy business and having tested it with my mild mild liners i would say that this is an excellent combo these pens or the ink inside minimal if any smudging um when you put the mild liners over it so you don't have to do it first and then write over it. you can actually write and then mild liner over that stuff so really like this idea I'm not sure what this is called if I can find it I'll leave it down below but the colors are gorgeous and they come out exactly like this so I won't swatch them for now because I know this video is getting long okay I bought some other sticker things which we will add to the planner I've got some Swatelier I think they're both um, Swatelier design they're just super popular they're like three bucks a pop I think the sticker set which sounds expensive but stickers can also get quite expensive so I got these food ones and you know I had to get some bunny ones these were a bit more expensive but they're adorable I think I might use them to decorate my monthly pages and so those are some goodies I know you saw this in the corner so I'm just gonna give it some airtime. Um, I did buy the Traveler's Notebook Traveler's Town set I have the larger the I guess the standard size this yeah standard size Traveler's Notebook but um, it's not quite useful as a planner for me I much prefer this current layout that I've chosen but I could not resist these they came with you know stickers they came with these dots they came with those tabs but I've ordered some new tabs because I think this colorway doesn't quite go with what I'm going for 
and it came with these sticker pockets which by the way i'm not going to use them just because they're they're very thin and i don't think they're going to hold up and i really don't want to muck them up so yes i have this i might use a couple of these stickers but it's not um the right fit for what i'm going on with right here 